Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, the biography, What If She Knew She Was Powerful, a real-life superwoman by Shalia Lenora Johnson-Peters, brings to light the suffering and abuse of a woman who has endured much. It serves as an encouragement to many women across the globe who are presently suffering abuse in their relationships, as well as a cautionary tale for others to take steps to avoid such abusive situations. At the age of 15, Shalia met, fell in love with a hometown boy. The couple exchanged vows, and this union produced eight children, five girls, three boys. After 19 years within a tumultuous and unfulfilling marriage, Shalia was unable to endure it any longer and made the life-changing decision to end her marriage. A courageous decision to escape was fueled by the devotion and trust in her faith and the overwhelming fear for her children, whom she devoted her life to. Shalia did not escape empty-handed, but with all eight children behind her and set sail on a long journey to the United States, the year was 1982. Shalia Lenora Johnson Peters, authors of author of What If She Knew She Was Powerful, a Real Life Superwoman, her memoir, our guest on this week in America. Shalia, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. I'm happy to be here with you. This is, and you are a superwoman. I mean, you've got such a powerful message that you're sharing with other people so you can help them through situations similar to what you found yourself in. Let's talk about the life experiences. Uh, what life experiences did you have that motiva- motivated you to keep going during all of this? Wow. Um, believe it or not, the experiences that I had, it kept me going. Uh, you know, many times I recall the times with my children's dad, and I think about the past, I could say I felt like trash, more or less than a woman especially during the time when he abused me in front of the children and, and, and then putting me in the car or adding his mistress in the car with me. I, you know, that, that made me feel less than a woman. But I'm never going back. I, I'm never going back. I am now drawn to motivated people. And I let their energy flow to me. And I spend less time with negative people. I also get motivation from the people in my life, such as my children, my family, and my Jer- and Jerry, my husband now. And no. That's helped me through. All that you went through, you always seem to have hope. What was it, the one thing in your past that gave you that hope? Because you never just threw in the towel and said, this is the way it's going to be. That hope was there. Where did that come from? Where did you get that? That's a good question, Rick. What gave me hope was my family in the United States. They were doing well, and I was the only one left in the Bahamas. And as I was suffering in an abusive marriage, my God, I began to pray. And seeing them gave me hope. In addition to that, praying to God with a sense of gratitude gave me a courage, just that courage, which ultimately gave me hope. And I held on to that. And that took you through so much to where you are today, extending that hope, that power of hope to, uh, to so many people. The book is What If She Knew She Was Powerful, A Real Life Superwoman by Shalia Lenora Johnson Peters, book available at stratton-press.com, of course, Amazon, the usual places. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you'll be able to link on directly and get information on the book. As you're Googling it, uh, Shalia is spelled S-H-E-L-I-A, and we'll have all that on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Who were some of the influential people in your life who supported you? And you had some, and you you touched on those from beginning to now. Very important people in your life. Who were some of those? Some of those people, and believe it or not, you never know who you need until you need them. Yes. The most important people was my my family, my siblings, my sister, my brothers, my mom, God rest her soul. They stood with me and they kept encouraging me 
that I am better than this. You are better than what you're going through. You are better. Just come on and, and over here with us. And I continue to stay there because of fear. And when I finally got the courage to leave, through the encouragement that they gave me, I step out and I made history reality today. You really have and turned your life around and now sharing your story with other people. The reviews have been excellent on your book. What if she knew she was powerful, a real life superwoman? Because this is not a, a textbook written by a mental health professional who doesn't fully understand the problem. You have been there. So you know exactly what it is that these uh, these other women are facing in, in large numbers. Let's say a woman who is currently locked in an abusive relationship tells you she can't live leave because she has no support system, can't survive without him. What would advice, what advice would you give her? Because I'm sure you hear that from a lot of people that, yeah, I know this is a bad situation, but I, I should be moving on. What advice would you give somebody who says, I can't, I have no support system and I need him in my life? Wow. Oh, it's amazing, Rick, because I was at a, a conference not too long ago and I heard that same story. And I felt the pain of that individual who was talking to me. She was a young woman. She had to be no one but 35 years old. And she was sharing her story. And what I said to her is what I'm going to say to everyone or anyone that's listening right now. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Never give up. I would encourage that person to look for something to live for. That small light could be their hope. Don't ever give up. My struggle was fear, but my hope was my children. If you are struggling in an abusive relationship, encourage yourself. Tell yourself, I deserve better. Just tell yourself, you deserve better. Take comfort in knowing you are not alone, never alone. And I hope you'll be encouraged to read my book, of the transforming work and the power of prayer. Don't ever give up. The book is What If She Knew She Was Powerful, A Real Life Superwoman. Uh, our guest on the program is the author, Shalia L. Johnson. The book, if you look at the book, you'll find the full name on the book. And we'll give you all that as we go through the program. You'll learn so much, I'm sure, as you're talking to, to women. And as they're talking, I'm sure you're able to look at it from a different perspective because you've been there. Let's say you meet a woman, talks highly about the man she's with for the past 12 years. Throughout the conversation, you realize he is not the champ she claims he is because he's verbally abusing her. He refuses to marry her, constantly tells her she, he is not leaving because she is nothing without him. How do you help her see her worth? And I guess that's probably the, the important thing there. He's using the fact that she doesn't have any self-esteem, self-worth. How do you get her to, to see her self-worth? That's very important. And I think most of the time, uh, women are afraid and fear grips them because that's what happened to me. Fear grips your heart and you feel like you cannot move. And even though you might have family members or friends encouraging you to get out, but the fear grip your heart so bad you can't even move. And they, they probably would say to you, like my ex said to me, if you leave me, I will kill you. And that's double fear upon you. So for years, I struggled with fear and guilt. Fear that he may come back to get me and guilt I place on myself. And as I began talking about the abuse, healing was taking place. And that prompted me to tell my story. Self-healing teaches empathy, which allow us to find grace, compassion, and forgiveness for others. So I would encourage that woman right now. That it could be a man, but most of the time it's a woman. I would encourage her, get hold of yourself. Don't allow fear to keep you in that situation. Step out, call someone, talk to someone, do whatever you have to do, but get out before it's too late. I mentioned before the power of faith, your belief, what that had in getting you through all of these difficult times. After hearing your story, how would you encourage someone who believes there is no God 
because a just and loving God would not put his children through such pain and abuse. Therefore, I, I really don't believe there is a God. How would you address that to them? Yeah, it's very, that's a very important question because I know that a lot of people think that way. How I encourage them depends on why they believe there is no God. That's the first thing I want to know, why they believe there is no God. There are many reasons why people believe there is no God. Some people have had no religious upbringing. Some may have believed in God at one time, but then something happened in their lives that made it difficult for them to believe now. And I would say to them, God is a spirit. God is in the entire universe. Even beyond this material world, we are a part of that universe and we can acknowledge God in the universe and God is in us. So I would say to that person, God is within you. Don't look outside of yourself. Just look within yourself and draw that power that is within you that will give you strength. Then you will see and you would know there is a God. When you started to to get your life together and deal with all of these issues and be able to look forward, you decided to write this book. And it would have to be painful at times going back through what you obviously went through to write the book. What prompted you to to write your story? Why did you feel this was important to to take what I've been through, remember it, and share it with others? What was so important? What, What prompted you to write your book? Wow. (laughs) For years, I could not do anything. I could not face anyone. I could not even date anyone because I was still dealing with the pain. For years, I struggled with fear and guilt. Fear that made me so afraid until sometimes I would shake and tremble in real conversations. The fear was so great to me, it gripped my heart. And now thinking about it now, I can even sometimes remember at one particular time, I was watching a movie where this woman was being physically abused and I began to shake and I began to tremble. So for years, I struggled with fear and guilt. Fear that he may come back to get me and guilt I place on myself. But as I began talking about the abuse, healing was taking place. And that prompted me to tell my story. So I realized self-healing teaches empathy, which allows us to find grace, compassion, and forgiveness for others. You've gone through all of the emotions that so many people now are going through. It's new to them. They're trying to figure out the best way to to deal with this. The book is What If She Knew She Was Powerful, A Real-Life Superwoman by Shalia Lenora Johnson-Peters. Book available at stratton-press.com. Find it at amazon.com as well. And you can link on to our website uh, and get that information. It's obvious in talking with you in this, you came what, to, the, to the country in, in 1982. So we're talking about decades ago, and it, it's still there when you, when you start to, to talking about it. Describe and compare the Shalia of the past to the Shalia of today, because there's a stark difference, isn't there? You've got this, uh, this confidence now, this ability, this belief in yourself, and you're putting it forward to help other people. You are so right, Rick. You are absolutely right. Wow. (laughs) The Shalia of today is driven to do whatever is possible to make life better for herself and her family. Even working two or three jobs when I had to. And it's amazing when I look back now, I realize the Shalia of the past was sad, scared, and depressed. And compared to who I am, compared to who I was then and who I am now, I am convinced, Rick, I am convinced my past made me stronger. Today I am stronger. I am wiser. I am better. I am an overcomer. 
Well, you are a real-life superwoman. That's the subtitle of the book, What If She Knew She Was Powerful, A Real-Life Superwoman by Shalea Lenora Johnson-Peters. That's interesting you, you mentioned that. If you had the opportunity to relive your life, what would you change? What would you keep and why? And it sounds like even though it was painful, you're comfortable because now you appreciate life and you're able to help other people. That is so true, Rick. That is really, really true. And it's, and, and, you know, we all have a past when we look back and we say, okay, if I could change my life, what would I do? How would I relive it? And I've thought about that. And I said, if I had the opportunity to relive my life, Rick, I would not have gotten married as young as I did. You see the year that I got married? Yes, I was only yes. 16. I would have not gotten married as young as I did. That would have allowed me to be much more mature, much, much more mature. Furthermore, I would change the guilt I place on myself. You know, and I would not blame myself for someone else's misfortune. I would have learned to forgive myself earlier in life and not go around with such guilt of someone else's misfortune. If I could relive my life again, I think I would do it differently, Rick. Thank you. Well, and you're, you're offering that in your book, What If She Knew She Was Powerful, to help other people. Here's sort of uh, the problem areas that I had, probably similar to what you had, and here's how you can change your life at this point. It's never too late. What do you say to a person who says, I'm in an abusive relationship. I feel the only way out is if one of us dies. And I'm sure oh, you've heard that God. before. How, what do you say to somebody who says death is the only way out of this? Wow. And you know, Rick, that's one of the reasons why I stayed in that marriage so long for 19 years, because my ex told me, if I ever leave him, he will kill me. He said, I'll find you wherever you are, and I will kill you. And then he goes further to say, and if you go to your family, I will kill them too. And, you know, fear gripped someone's heart so bad until they believe that. And I'm saying to someone right now who is saying that one of us has to die. I was there. But I'm going to say to you, don't give up. No matter what, look for that silver light that will tell you, I have to get out. I must get out. I cannot stay in this abusive relationship for one of us to die. You don't want, ever want to leave your children if you have children. A few minutes You left. don't ever want to do that. And let me ask you about that. A couple of minutes left in the program, but I feel this is important because in knowing your story, story, you almost went back. When you think about the children and we're, this is a marriage, the boys need a father, everybody needs a father. He says now he's going to change, things will be different. And, and you almost did that. Talk about that experience and how that should there should be caution flags waving when, when you think maybe you can rec reconcile it and, and pull it all together. Yeah, there was a time I felt like I made the wrong decision. I did. It was a time I felt like I made the wrong decision. And it's amazing because when I felt like I made the wrong decision, I wanted to go back. And frankly, I did. What made me go back? I felt guilty taking the children away from their dad. I thought about my daughters because girls need their dad as security. I thought about my sons because boys need their dad as, as a mentor. With that decision, I went back. After he begged and he pleaded, he even cried for me to come back. So I thought he had changed. Nevertheless, within nine months, I realized he did not change. In fact, it was worse. If some, Absolutely worse. If someone is thinking, my situation's unique, I just probably, I can't share it with anybody. If you read Shalia's book, What If She Knew She Was Powerful, you'll find a lot of similarities between 
maybe what you're experiencing and what she went through. And I've got a minute or so left here at the end. How long a process is this? This isn't like all of a sudden a light switch goes off and suddenly you're dealing with, with, with this guilt that you're carrying around that you mistakenly think it's all your fault. Uh, how long does it take before you really transition into that powerful person that you've become today? How long it took? I would say it was a day and then a week and then a month and then years. It did not happen overnight. And I want to encourage that person listening right now. It is not going to happen overnight, but hope gives you to reason to hold on and believe that it will change. It will change. Hold on to someone who will encourage you to come out. It took years for me to get over that because I stayed in it for 19 years, hearing the lies over and over again. So I want to say to that person, don't allow yourself to stay there thinking it's never going to get, you're never going to get out. You will get out. You just have to believe in yourself and hold on to someone who will help you. They will hold your hand and they will take you out. I had a plan. When the, when the abuse began, I formed a plan in my head. I had to get out, and I, and I had to get out alive with my eight children. And I knew I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I just knew I was going to leave. I just didn't know how and when. When I finally got out, the plan was in motion. I placed my faith in God, my love and dedication to my children also motivate me. And even now, the plan is still working. So I would say to that person, form a plan in your head and then make it happen. After watching you, listening to you, reading the book, you know that there is a plan that is working in Shalia's life. If you're thinking, boy, my situation's unique, she's not going to understand. When you read the book, you'll find that going through uh Similar to what you're going through, Shalaya went through it and is able to to thrive. It, uh, the time has gone by so quickly. This book is a must read. It's the title of the book is What If She Knew She Was Powerful, a Real Life Superwoman. The author is Shalia Lenora Johnson Peters. Shalia is S H E L I A. Book available at Stratton Press.com. You'll find it at Amazon.com, all of the uh, the usual places. Googling what if uh, she knew she was powerful will take you to uh, to information on the book. And, of course, it's all listed on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can get direct information on uh, Shalia's book. It's been a pleasure having you on the program, sharing your story, which is touching so many people. Thank you for being with us on the show. Thank you so much, Rick, and I hope to see you again. Hopefully we can do this again. So much more we can talk about. Shalia is uh, the author of the book, What If She Knew She Was Powerful, A Real Life Superwoman uh, by Shalia Lenora Johnson Peters. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.